So I'm always going to um, appeal as much as much as I possibly can to a graph, right? So 3x minus 5, what does it roughly look like? Forget about the absolute value sign for a second. You can see the gradient, you can see the y-intercept. So it will be something like this line, like that, okay? But of course the absolute value means it's going to rebound, like so. The intercept used to be negative 5 down here, but that part is reflected up. So that makes that 5. Uh, if you have a look at the gradient, <coughs> uh, that's going to go, uh, that's going to be about, what is that, 3 fifths, I think. Yeah, 3 fifths, okay. So you've got a rough picture. Now I want to know when that thing is going to be equal to 2. Wait, hold on a second, I'm just looking. No, sorry, that's 5 thirds. You want to know when this graph intersects with 2 in order to solve the first bit, right? So just visually, if you think about uh, if that's 2, 4, and 5, here's my, my 2 line. So here are where I'm expecting my solutions, okay? Now, I can't just look at that. Like, this is, this is too icky to be able to solve visually um, with precision anyway. So I'm going to think about this branch, which is y equals 3x minus 5. And then I'm going to think of the other branch, which is y equals minus 3x plus 5. Just everything with negatives. And then once I solve for each of those, it will give me the two values. Okay. So really quickly, minus 3x plus 5 equals 2, minus 3x equals minus 3, x equals 1. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, is that, because <laughs> I had to fix this, does that match with what you expect? That's the solution just a bit to the left of 5 thirds. That's 1 and 2 thirds. That's 1. Thumbs up. We'll just quickly crunch the other one. 3x minus 5 equals 2. Tell me what to do. So you bring the 5 over with 7 and yeah. 5 times by 3. So this is 2 and a third. Again, yeah, perfect. And in fact, you even see there's the symmetry there, right? Okay, so now that I know where those two points are, I'm going to add them onto my graph. So this one here is 1. This one here is 7 thirds. Okay? So now I'm going to use that to solve this. This is where the absolute value collides with 2. This is where the absolute value is beneath 2. So I have a look at my graph and I see, look, it's the V part here that is beneath the 2 line. If I were to change the direction of the inequality and say, when is the absolute value above 2? Then I don't want the V, I want the outside parts. Yeah. So the V is between 1 and 7 thirds, not on the outsides of 1 and 7 thirds. So therefore I can say, for this part of the question here, it's between 1 and 7 over 3. That's my solution. And you, would, you always have to draw it on a number plane. You? Uh, you won't always be asked to, like sometimes that's your answer, but frequently they'll say represent that on a number line. So then conveniently I've already drawn my number line right there. Okay. So I would say we've got boundaries included, so I'm going to go field circle, field circle, and then I'm going to draw the line between. So it doesn't say for that, then you don't have to do it. If they don't say, you know, uh, I mean, they'll say, look for a verb. There's always a verb, right? If the verb is simply solve, that means tell me the x values that satisfy this. There they are. Okay. Often it will then say solve and hence plot the solution on a number line. So I'm going to plot that on a number line. That's what it looks like. Um, in, in an absolute value question, like, even if you know it's right, do you still have to, like, um, if it's not the, if it's an inequality sign, do you have to um, test it? If do it's an inequality sign, do you have to test it? Okay, so you've got a bit of an issue there because uh, the short answer is no. Because if I have a look at this, this is my solution for my inequality. How are you going to test? You, there's an infinite number of numbers in this um, interval know. here. You can't actually put everything in and test it out. Where there's a, a finite number of solutions like here and here, yes, you can. But the graph tells you everything you need to know. It tells you you don't have to test because these are the two points of intersection. I mean, like if it's like a if it has a variable on the other side. So if it's like if there's a variable on the other yes. side, then yes. Because what happens is, as an example, uh, suppose I now solve. Do you have no? You know, not yet. Anyway, uh, if I add something onto this question, if I go as the value of three x minus five, let's solve when that's equal to four x plus one. Okay. Now again, I'm going to appeal to the graph and I'm going to think about what on earth does this thing look like? Well, I've got a y-intercept of 5 for the original graph. Uh, I guess that's about 1. What does the rest of the equation tell you over here? 
Why? It's a super steep line, right? And importantly, it is steeper than this line, right? Now, because it's steeper, I'll just draw it roughly like that. Because it's steeper, do you see that this red line is never going to intersect with this branch over here? Never happens. They're, they're just going to go further and further apart. Um, they do come closer together, but at one point, this line stops. Okay? Now, the reason why this becomes significant for testing is that if you do not graph, you just launch straight into cases, right? If you want to straighten to cases, you will write at some point 4x plus 1 equals 3x minus 5. Because this is the this is this case, right? And then you'll get a solution out of this. Uh, well let's let's just go ahead and do it. Subtract 3x from both sides gives you x. Uh, subtract 1 from both sides gives you negative 6. But this is not it's clearly not a solution, right? Can you tell me why? Well, number one, <laughs> here, that's like one, right? Negative six is like over here. There's nothing happening over there, right? Secondly, the reason why this isn't a solution is because this only exists in a certain case. When, when is the absolute value of 3x minus 5 equal to 3x minus 5? And the answer is to the right of x equals of um, x is equal to 5 on 3, right? But look, you, you see how these are contradictory, yeah. right? So you can see, you test this, and it won't, it won't work. Let's, let's just put it back in. Um, the left-hand side is going to be uh, the absolute value of minus 18 minus 5, which is 23. The right-hand side is going to be negative uh, 24 plus 1, which unsurprisingly is exactly the opposite. It's exactly the opposite because we tried the wrong case in a place where it doesn't exist. So right. that means you have to say, therefore, x equals minus 6 is not a solution. Yeah, or it just isn't. It's, it's not valid. valid. Yeah, correct. Either of those would be fine. They both stay in the same so thing. Then, um, so yeah. But then what about the other one? You, even though you know it's a solution, do you have to uh, show in your this case here? Like this one that I just solved. No, it's asking for the other branch. Oh, oh, oh right. Um, solve that? Yes, you see, if what you do is you go and do your, suppose I erase this from the board, right? If I do my cases blindly, like if I, if I don't say this, for example, I'm just like, okay. And, and students frequently do this. They write one line here. They don't tell me why they're doing it. They're just like, I know I've got to do something like that. And then they do the other one over on the other side, uh, minus 3x plus five, and then they solve, 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 and then they get an answer, right? If you've got something over here and something over there, and you haven't explained where these cases are coming from, you haven't given some kind of domain restriction, you don't have a picture that tells you what is what, then how do you know which one is which? How do you know which one is the solution which is going to be valid and the solution which is not going to be valid? Answer, you must test. Every time. So even if you have a graph, you have to prove both. Okay. If you've them. graphed them, your graph substitutes as your test. Because I can look and I can say from the graph, this is not a solution. Uh, In fact, I would do that. I, I would save a step. I would say from the graph, I don't even need to look for a solution on this. It's irrelevant. It will never give me one. Um, that's why the graph, even though it takes time to draw it, even if it's like a basic graph, which is not like all measured out and stuff, it's good enough for me to see there's only one place I need to test for. I'll go straight to that equation. So basically, uh, if you have a variable, just test it anyway. Uh, if you have a variable, and this is why I did it the first time, in all cases, whether you have a variable or you don't have a variable, I would graph. I would graph. Uh, you're an extension one student. Two students need to be able to wrap their head around something like this. As an extension one student, you should be able to think that graph like that. So. That's what I would do if you're asking what I would do, because um, it's just faster. It's just faster.